Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for a learning and growing webinar here at Hawks Learning. My name is Victoria Kelly, and I'm part of our training and support team. And our presenter today is Dr. Herbert Baum. His presentation, PowerPoint Slides for Enhanced Instruction, will be today. We thank you all for joining us. If you have any questions at at the session, please feel free to enter those into the Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom room screen. And at the, at the end of our presentation, we'll take some time to go through those questions with our presenter. On that note, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you. Thank you, Victoria. And thank you for the introduction. And to those listening either now or to the recording, thank you for your time. When I began and learned that Hawks had these slides, I was like thrilled. I said, gee, my life is gonna be so much easier. So let me share my screen with you. Um, and I said, my life is gonna be much easier. They had done all the work and they have, and it does make life easier. But I found that my students were getting confused by some of the things on the slides. And I found that to make that slides even better, I had to do a little bit of work on my own. And of course, the use of slides became more critical as courses went online. So what I want to share today with you is my journey using this material as a basis for my lessons and why I think it's an important starting point and some thoughts for you on how you can, how you can make it yours. Okay. So if you ever purchased a diamond, the jeweler probably spoke to you about the three C's, cut, clarity, and carrot. For Hawks, I also have three C's, completeness, consistency, and complement. And I wanna share with you what I mean by these three and delve a little bit deeper into each one of them. Completeness. If I was developing my own slides to cover this material, I would have to ask myself, did I cover all the relevant material? Hawks has taken that concern away from me. The slides, though not a perfect match for the learn section, have more than enough material that, it, that any of my students could take the the practice and the certify and pass them. So this took one of the concerns away from me. Consistency. I found that students are getting, uh, were looking at the words that are being used by Hawks and expects to find the same wording. So by using this material, when they go to practice and certify, they're seeing the same thing. They're familiar with it. This consistency gives them the assurance that they are not going to have to decipher new words and new material. It also hopefully enhances their understanding. Compliment. There are various complementary slides that I create. Using the slides from Hawks as a starting point, I add material that I believe will enhance the student's understanding. And I'm gonna go into this one a little bit, into a little bit more detail. So one example is, here is a word problem from Hawks. This is the original slide. It's a perfectly reasonable word problem, um, typical of what we see in elementary statistics. Students that I work with often have times, often have difficulty determining what's relevant to take out of here and what is not. Just too much words on the screen. So what I have done is sometimes I will go through and underline. So what are the relevant parts of here? It's a random sample, 12 mothers, pain reliever while pregnant, all the way down. And what is it they want us to do? 
because that's also the thing that students often get confused. What is it that they're being asked? They're being asked to construct a 99% confidence interval. So with this sort of framework, they have a better understanding of what they need to do and how to get it into their calculators. Now, I often go one step further. I distill it down even, even more by looking at the two groups in this case, we have pain reliever and no pain reliever. We have the relevant data, n equals 12, the mean, the sample standard deviation. We have the same for the no pain reliever group. And then we have, what are we being asked? We're being asked for a 99% confidence interval. Are there any specifics we're told that will help us solve the problem? information that I need. Well, the ends are below what we normally would use to do this on a calculator using a normal distribution. And so what I, um, a, excuse me, a T distribution. So we need the populations are approximately normally distributed. And that helps the students understand by taking all of this, what is it that they need to do? So here's another slide from Hawks. And what I've done after this is here's, the, here's what Hawks has put up. We wanna find the true proportion of adults who said that they would travel less this year for non-business trips. And to use their calculator, I laid out for them, you need the N x the number with the property that is a success and the level of confidence. So the question I ask them is, we have n, c, and p, how can I find x? Some of the students will get it, some of them will be able to explain it to me. Meanwhile, others will have some difficulty with that. And so in addition to this slide, I have an explanatory slide. So we know that P equals 0.61, P is X over N. We substitute and solve, and I go through all the various steps. I have found that when I skip a step or two, there's inevitably a student who said, how did I get from A to C if I didn't show them B? So I've gotten to the point now when I do my slides to make sure that I have all the relevant steps in there. We still must check that NP hat is greater than or equal to 10. And likewise, that N times one minus P hat is greater than or equal to 10. I do that calculation with them. And then we choose a one proportion Z interval and we can input our values. And Hawks has slides that show what those values look like on input and what that looks like when you are finished. So there are other advantages. One of the things is that I, we use Canvas as our learning management system. So I post all of my slides before my lectures on Canvas. Some of the students will follow on their computers and take some notes in their notebooks. Some students have printed out what I've, what I've done um, and take notes on that. The other part of it is it gives students a reference. So if they're going through their notes and they can't read their own writing, which happened to me quite often as a student, I have a place to go back and check what the instructor said. And so posting those slides on Canvas is a big help. The other thing I do is I create slides of solved homework problems. So when I start my class, each class starts with either a class exercise or, and then followed by a homework problems or just start with the homework problem. By having those as slides and showing and asking the questions and then showing the solution, students can use those as a study guide. So they're another way to tie back 
and I put each of those in the same section or chapter uh, with my slides. So if you went to my Canvas account, you would see something like chapter six, and it would have sections one, section two, section three, and then it would have homework section one, homework section two, homework section three. So students can easily follow and find what they're looking for. Most importantly of when you're doing these slides is to have fun. I've learned to use Bitmoji to try to make the slides a little bit more um, whimsical in ways. Um, and I don't know if students react positively to it, but it does sort of break the ice and put a smile on their faces. So I think that the key here is to use Hawks as your base, build upon it, and have fun with it. And with that, I'll go to my last slide, which is thank you for being here today. And as I can see in my crystal ball, there are some people who have questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so delighted to see that you shared a Bitmoji. I was really hoping you would. <laughs> um, so to our audience, I, I have the pleasure of getting to support Professor Baum as um, one of our training and support team members. And so um, in working with him, I've seen his Canvas layout and um, that his welcome screen on Canvas has a Bitmoji um, in his classroom. And I've just always appreciated that, that special touch. So I'm glad you shared that. <laughs> Um, if anyone has any questions at this time, we have disabled the chat, but we have a Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom room screen at this time. So if you have any questions, please feel free to go ahead and enter those into the Q&A box. Um, I, have a, I have a question for you. Um, have the students shared personally with you that the PowerPoint slides are helpful, especially with those highlights and underlines? Um, I've, I've not gotten that direct feedback from the students, but what I have gotten is if for some reason I haven't posted on Canvas the slides, I get a whole bunch of emails from students saying, they're not there. Where are they? <laughs> so I, I'm, I think that the slides are doing, are, are helping them. Mm -hmm. um, I do know from students that um, for some students I've individually tutored, they have pointed out that the underlying helps. And typically the students that I tutor are those that are having problems with the course. And one of the things is just not understanding what's relevant and what's not. Right. Mm -hmm. I can definitely see how that would be very helpful, um, just extracting those particular points that are right. um, helpful in actually solving the problem. So that's great. Um, I have another question just from classroom observation. Um, do you see more students um, compared to, I know you mentioned some print them out, um, some just take notes, some just follow along on their computer. What have you observed um, students doing the most? Is it printing them out and coming to class with them? Most of the time, I think they're following on their computers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I still have a lot of students taking notes um, and um, some, you know, the, the issue with taking notes is worry, is knowing what's important to take a note of and knowing where to find it again, which right. is always an issue for some of, some of the students. Um, but yeah, it, it's a mix of the two, more than, more than people printing it out, but I have had people print it out. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, I mean, as a student, if you download the um, PowerPoint, you always have that opportunity to write essentially footnotes. So uh, that's likely yeah. what they're doing there on their computers. Um, well, that's great. Well, I'm sure they really appreciate it. And I'm glad that you've been able to customize um, what 
what resource we have provided to best fit your classroom environment and um, best assist your students. Um, at this time, if we do not have any other questions, um, I will go ahead and close us out. Um, everyone, thank you again for your time this afternoon and, and for attending. We hope that you can attend some more of our learning and growing webinars. And at this time, I am going to go ahead and enter into our chat box for everyone to see um, if you would like to present a webinar yourself. Um, we would love to hear from you. And I'm pasting in the chat box right now a link that you can use to submit your webinar proposal. And also another link where you can see all of our learning and growing webinars this far and those that we have planned ahead. Um, again, if you have any questions um, after our presentation close this afternoon, you can always reach out to us at 843-571-2825 or chat with us on our website. We have that 24-7 live chat. We're always happy to assist with any questions you have. On that note, I'll go ahead and close this out. Thank you again to our presenter. I hope everyone has a wonderful remainder of their day. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.